I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Gates McFadden, who reprises her role as Dr. Beverly, Beverly Crusher in the third season of Star Trek Picard. Uh, now, when you were approached with this opportunity to reunite uh, the Next Generation cast, was there any hesitation or was it something that you just jumped at the chance? Well, it was both. The thought of reuniting was fantastic and that that possibility had been dangled at one point in front of us by Patrick himself. So that was really wonderful to know that that was going to happen and that we were all going to come back if we all liked the stories. And I think that the producer was lovely. He, he checked in with all of us individually about the story. I would not have wanted to come back if it was simply just, oh, she's also going to be there and she has a tiny little bit. I wanted to have a really interesting, fun story so that you have something to really act. And everyone felt the same way. And I feel that we were listened to. And Terry Metalis came and his writers, his team, came up with an amazingly exciting story. And what did you th think about that story when it was pitched to you? Like, what, what were some of the things that you liked the most about it? Well, I liked the fact that she had been away from everybody and that she had gone through a whole other, almost a whole other career life. She started this uh, Doctors Without Borders in a planetary way, and she was off doing a lot of adventures and exploring and risky things and also bringing up this child, this love child. Um, I, I loved that because it wasn't just coming back in the same old way. She obviously had evolved um, as an actor has evolved as a human being, hopefully, <laughs> in a good way. And so it was exciting to come back and be part of the story. The only danger was I did not want her to be, I didn't want it to be some simple issue of, boy, what a, that bitch, why didn't she tell him <laughs> that she had the baby? I think it's much more complex than that. And uh, that there are reasons that she didn't, and those reasons have to, they cannot all be revealed initially, and they still haven't all been revealed, but I think she had instincts about something. And um, a woman's instincts often very good. Uh, and how much work uh, is it as an actor to, uh, you know, re, you know, to jump back into this character, uh, you know, when she's had these other 20 years of experiences that happened off screen? Difficult, no. It was like, you know, falling off a log. It was just natural. The thing that was fun is that we we are all friends and we we are all in touch. So to have a chance to really, how many years later? I mean, so many years later to put on some sort of uniform and be acting together and having conflicts, doing different sorts of scenes that was a trip. I loved every minute of it. It was really, really fun because we, you know, we, we see each other as friends, but then to get back into the characters and to explore that, it was truly easy and wonderful to do. Um, and, you know, you mentioned uh, how much uh, uh, Beverly has changed uh, over the years and, and how she's gone on these adventures and we're actually reintroduced to her uh, in an action sequence where she's fighting off intruders on her ship. And that's a side of her that we, uh, you know, didn't get to see as much uh, in the uh, next generation and in the in the films. Uh, what was it like exploring, you know, that kind of edgier uh, uh, aspect of, of Beverly? Well, I do a tremendous amount of movement in my life and I've been a choreographer. And so again, I think what was great is she was a three dimensional woman. She was older, but she still could run up those stairs and, you know, uh, get into some sort of combat situation and she would be fine. Um, I think that made a lot of sense to me and she still is a scientist. It wasn't that she was just the, mo the mother of this new child. Uh, she was also still a doctor and a scientist who does tremendous research as well as trying to heal people. So I thought it was great and I loved the fact that she was commandeering her own ship. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know, it, did, it wasn't like that when we started, trust me. It became that way. And now it's so much better for the women characters in the franchise. I mean, it's wonderful. Um, I love all the iterations, but I do think um, it, it was just 
it was a gift from Terry Metalis. I, I give him tremendous credit because he adored TNG when he was younger, and he has really honored all of us, I think, in, in a pretty special way. Uh, were there things about uh, Dr. Crusher that, uh, you know, you know, that you wanted to explore in the next generation and in the films that you didn't get a chance to explore that you're, you're you know, that you've uh, been excited to? Oh, absolutely. I mean, before, um, it was sort of like, we'd get an occasional episode that you would be focused on. But, uh, you know, I had some very terrific episodes and then some strange ones. Uh, I, I think what I liked was they saw that who we were as um, human beings, as friends, and also as characters in this franchise. And I feel I actually had a well-written scene of conflict, several scenes with uh, Sir Patrick, and that was really fun because usually we didn't have conflicts. So there are much more, there are many more high emotional roller coaster things happening in this. We were all much more, I feel, um, we just didn't have much conflict. It was a, a very different time. I think we're in a time where there's a lot of conflict. And so to see that we can have great arguments and yet still love, care for, and work together, that's, that's a good example. That's what we need to be able to do. It's not like everybody just um, immediately forgives the other person, but we always have a greater cause that we need to work together on. And then time and working together makes it so suddenly you, you're maybe not in conflict like that anymore. Um, you get to know somebody better that you haven't seen for a long time. I think we make snap judgments all the time in our lives about people. And if we could just stay open a bit longer to the possibility that maybe they're not just the way we perceive them um, and be patient with each other. I know I struggle with it every day and I feel it's, um, it's the, the path, I, I wanna go in that direction more and more because it's too easy to just make snap judgments. And I liked the, that it was presented our char my character in such a way that you could make a snap judgment and many people did. Like, oh, that, no, that's unfair that she didn't tell Picard. That's unfair. That's wrong. And there are, then they, it, a couple more episodes in, they're, they're saying, well, okay, maybe I understand. <laughs> and it's good because it just gets us all to look at more than one side of a situation, uh, of an event. Um, and, and then make our decisions on how we feel about it. What is the truth of the situation? Um, and you do get that great confrontation scene uh, where they sort of, where uh, Beverly explains her reasons and, and John Luke confronts her about it. Um, what was it like to read that for the first time and, and then uh, to get to, to act that out opposite? Uh, well, it changed a lot. Um, I was worried that I didn't want it to be presented like too much from his point of view, but the show is called Picard. It's not called Crusher. Um, it got, uh, several things got changed just a couple days before we shot um, that I thought made her, arg Crusher's argument a bit weaker. So I felt I did lose some of her power that I had originally. Um, but again, I can justify it in many ways. And I feel that um, sometimes I think that she, again, I played it one way where she, there was an instinct that she knew there was a very serious reason why she should protect that child from everybody knowing. And also if you follow the, the Picard show, it was only second season that the character of Picard uh, really dealt with his relationship, tricky relationship with his family and his father. It's not like it was decades ago. So in many ways, it's the perfect moment for something like this, actually. And I, I loved all the, um, uh, the actors that were cast that were the younger, younger generation. Um, Ed Spilliers, who plays uh, my space son, number two. Uh, it was just terrific to work with, as were all the other younger actors. And what's it like having that very different dynamic? Because of course you did have that mother-son uh, relationship on the show with uh, Will Wheaton as we uh, Wesley Crusher. Um, and this is of course a much different dynamic. Uh, Jack Crusher is a much different character. Uh, what, what's that been like? Well, that's, that's what really makes it interesting. Um, 
what's funny to me, <laughs> because I have a son, and he is just the nicest human being. He doesn't, he's not a, he doesn't talk back in the way that both Jack Crusher and Wesley Crusher spoke. They both were like much more the, the sort of normal teenage, uh, you know, back talking sort of teenagers. Whereas I, I don't know that many in real life that are quite like that, but it's interesting that I was given <laughs> two space sons that have that capacity. Uh, I loved it. Um, I thought it was nice to have something that was so different. And he is edgier, uh, which is, it makes sense when the story keeps uh, going forward. You'll see, yes, there's a reason for that. I can't give stuff out. <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't want you to. Uh, I'm looking forward to enjoying and uh, discovering the, the season uh, episode by episode. Um, and, uh, but TV has changed a lot uh, in the years since Next Generation. Um, you know, it's become more cinematic in many ways. Uh, how different is Picard from just a production standpoint than Next Generation? Oh, a huge difference, I would say. Um, immediately, just the, the way the set is just base lit is so much darker than when we did our show. Our show was like you were in you know, a playroom <laughs> it was really light. And actually the way many space station shots that I've seen videos, it's super bright, you know, in, up on the space station. But this is definitely cinematic. There's so many cameras and there, so many of them are moving all the time and different types of, different types of crane shots and the lenses, I guess it's the lenses more than anything, because there would be times where I would say, can they see us? Actually, we're, we felt like we were in the dark, <laughs> we old people. And they'd go, oh, yeah. And then I'd see it and I'd go, oh, yeah, those lenses really picked up the tiny bit of light that was there. So it's, it's really amazing. And also they have like a video village. We used to have one person who would have like a video where he would look at different things and he would make sure we could do the special effects for it. We had a whole village and it was incredible. It would happen like that. Um, they're still opening those doors though, you know, a certain way. <laughs> it's not quite the person up above, but it's still, there is some manual labor involved. But the space, um, the bridge was awesome, I thought. I thought it was so beautiful. The design was terrific. As, and the original design was terrific too. It's just that we can tell we have, we're moving forward in terms of cinema, um, sound. The sound is amazing. Um, we, it, and again, it picks, the microphones are so much better now. It picks up everything. We used to have to redo so many shots because of a, there'd be a little tiny noise. We, I can't remember any time when I shot that that happened. And I had barely any uh, looping to do. Whereas before, if someone would put a pencil down, that would ruin the whole you know, shot and we'd have to redo it and you'd have to loop all of the dialogue in that walking scene. Didn't do that at all. Um, and, you know, the universe of Star Trek has expanded, uh, you know, so much in recent years, you know, Discovery, Lower Decks, Strange New Worlds. There's just so many uh, iterations of it. Uh, ha have you kept up with uh, all of the universe in all the directions it's gone in? <laughs> I have, I, I, I'm familiar with all of the shows and I've watched several episodes of all of the shows. Do I have time to watch every show, every episode? No, but I love all of the iterations. And I think that they each had such a beautiful tone. Some have humor, some are more serious. Um, I, I think it kind of shows how powerful Gene Roddenberry's vision was and how much people long for a future that is more positive than the situation we're in right now. I think that's what I get. I get that when I go to conventions. People need something positive that anchors them. That's also scientific and has technology. It's not like it's simplistic. Um, it's, it's something that really gets you to think and also feel that if we all could think and work together, that maybe we can solve it. Um, the future, because there is going to be a space migration at some point. I, I have a very strong feeling this is going to happen. And we all, every single person on this planet, if that happens, would be considered an immigrant if they migrated somewhere else. So we need to start rethinking what immigrants, 
because we are all going to be immigrants if we haven't been already. <laughs> Certainly the, in the United States, except for Native Americans, we are all immigrants. So um, anyway, that I love, I love the politics of um, Star Trek because it's, it's more than just good and bad. It's about critical thinking, I think. Critical thinking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, fans uh, have still been invested in in just this franchise. Uh, you know, Gene Roddenberry's vision for decades now. Uh, you know, did you imagine when you uh, started as you know Dr. Crusher in you know in um, Next Generation that people would still be invested in these characters? Uh, you know, <laughs> decades later. Of course not. I had no clue. I really had no idea. Uh, I thought, well, if this goes for, you know, a few episodes, great. <laughs> I was living in New York. I had no idea the power of the message, which I think that really is um, a lot of what's so beloved about the series, as well as the real science and technology. I mean, they consult with real astrophysicists and medical doctors and uh, you know, we all have, uh, they're, they're actually, they're so into virtual reality now. I mean, I can't believe it. Did it, They didn't even have laptops when I started filming, okay? I mean, think about that. The first laptops were about five seasons in or something, four seasons in. And now it's like, where's my laptop? <laughs> I, I'm so used to technology. And we've got iChat and the, all of the bot things are happening. I, I bought, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think Star Trek has predicted a lot of things. And so we need to uh, work on the human side so that we can actually still have a world. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm holding out for the world where we get the holodecks finally. I really want the holodecks in the future. It's, it's coming. I mean, I just read an article in the New York Times today and they're talking about it. And there's all these people who are, you know, they're buying um, imaginary real estate, you know, they're buying like it's a, it, that's, that is like a holodeck. You have a virtual house and that's yours. And then you, I mean, amazing. Not too long from now, maybe we'll meet in a bar in the holodeck. <laughs> Um, and without giving uh, too much away, uh, of course, uh, the season as we're recording, this is still underway. Uh, how do you feel about how, you know, the story ends for, for Dr. Crusher at the end of the season? What, what feelings did it give you? I think we have very, I, I had, uh, as a character, I had, she had very good feelings that um, from where it started, which was really in a lot of terror and darkness, to something that was uh, much more um, kumbaya, <laughs> in, a, in a good way, in a way of, of collaboration and uh, love and feelings that were positive. Um, I think she feels, at the end, I think the character feels that she was seen because she was perceived as somebody who, why did she do that and why did she bring this, her son on board and she's ruining it and he's the cause of the problem and you know it was very mixed <laughs> so i think it's kind of it's a, it's a good arc uh well uh i'm uh, enjoying watching that arc unfold um it's been a pleasure to watch the series and to talk with you about it uh thank you so much for for joining me well thank you so much daniel i appreciate it uh really thank you so much mm -hmm.